If you have spent any time on Hearthstone Standard Ladder, you have probably seen enough Prince Renethal, Astellor Bloodsworn, or Brand Bronzebeard to last a lifetime. These are some of the highest played cards in the game and have warped the entire metagame of Hearthstone around them. This video is not about those cards. Today I want to look at the opposite end of the play rate table and look at the cards that never see play. All these cards were reported as being included in 0% of decks on HS Replay in the period of about the past 14 days. Some of these cards were never good, some of them fell victim to nerfs, while others were better in different formats. Either way, let's begin. Suckerhook is a 4 mana 3-6 pirate that transforms your weapon into one that costs one more at the end of your turn. Why, why would you want to do this? One benefit of this card would be turning your current nearly broken weapon into a brand new weapon, but this would mean you're missing out on a swing of something like Auction House Gavel or Carving Chisel. Another one could be using your weapon's good battle cry effect and then swapping it out, like using Splitting Axe and then evolving it into a Doom Hammer or something. Here at Chundo Enterprises, we go the extra mile, so I looked at all 45 weapons in standard right now to see if there are any good outcomes for this, especially considering you have to wait until end of turn for this effect to activate, so it probably won't evolve more than once. Shaman can either evolve a 2 mana weapon or a 5 mana weapon. Your 2 mana weapon can evolve into notably Rhymefang Sword, Magnifying Glaive, or Ashzar and Trident. However, it could also just evolve into Fiery War Axe or Soulbreaker. Alright, well the 3 mana slot seems to be mostly slightly upgraded Fiery War Axes, what about the 6 mana slot? There are only 2 6 mana weapons in standard, and they are Corrupted Ashbringer, a sort of okay card, and Hope of Qualthalos, another sort of okay card that is probably worse than Snapdragon in most cases, and certainly not worth the trouble of evolving out of Doomhammer, one of the best weapons in the game especially considering Doomhammer plus Rockfighter Weapon is one of the game's most staple win conditions. Cannon Master Smythe is a 5 mana 4 4 legendary minion with Battlecry, turn your secrets into 3 3 soldiers. They transform back when they die. The card that was part of the very powerful Baron's Secret Paladin archetype, it quickly became the advice that you actually don't want to include this card in your deck. At Master Tor Orgrimmar, RNG Lees brought a Secret Paladin list that included Sword of the Fallen, Northwatch Commander, and not Cannon Master Smythe. It certainly doesn't help that one of the strongest decks at the time was No Minion Mage, being brought by 13 of the 16 competitors, and every single one of those lists was running two Devolving Missiles, turning your soldiers into smaller minions, and meaning you don't get the secrets back. The card is fairly understated, being a 5 mana 4 4, falling pretty squarely below the Pit Fighter line. If you have one secret out, it becomes a 5 mana 7 7, which is above curve but has no impact on the board immediately. At two secrets, the card becomes more acceptable as a 10-10, over you are giving up having the secrets during this time. While the value can be hard to quantify, there are a lot of times when you would rather have a secret that makes your opponent play around Oh My Yog than just have another 3-3. For comparison, we can look at Petting Zoo, a 3-mana hunter spell that sums a 3-3 and an additional 3-3 for each secret you have. This card comes down earlier and can pretty easily summon more 3-3s than Smythe, and it didn't really see any play. Why? Because 3-3s three sound great, but if they don't have Rush or anything, they are sitting ducks for Drain Soul, Holy Smite, and especially Brain Freeze at the time. Then, once cards like Serrated Bone Spike and Harpoon Gun got released, it felt like Smite's days were numbered. This card doesn't want to be played in control decks as they don't want to be playing a bunch of secrets and they aren't looking for good tempo plays. And it doesn't want to be played in aggro decks as the secret package has now become too clunky and buffs to Warhorse Trainer make dude directions much more appealing with cards like Buffet Bigum and Stand Against Darkness. Lion's Frenzy is a 3 mana 0 3 weapon that has attack equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. This used to be a 1 up in Brute Questline Demon Hunter, but with Nurse to Brute, that version of Questline Demon Hunter fell off. Today, Questline Demon Hunter is played as an OTK deck, utilizing cards that can go face and spell damage from Silver Moon Arcanist and Guild Trader. With this combo as your win condition, a weapon that can do maybe 7 damage becomes a lot less appealing. Demon Hunter certainly has tons of card draw and attack boost and spectral sight and chaos strike, but you'd much rather put that toward a game plan that doesn't lose as much to a single taunt. Of all the cards listed today, this might be the one with the most potential. Shelter's Moon Tree is an 8 mana 5 5 legendary with a battle cry to make the next 3 spells you draw into casts when drawn. Being a legendary revealed by Kriparian can lead you to some pretty tough places. The issues with this card are twofold. One, you're not getting any immediate impact. 
you are paying 8 mana for a 5-5. By the time you've reached 8 mana, aggro and combo decks are about to kill you and this card isn't doing anything to protect you. Here are a list of other things Druid can do for 8 mana. Summon Anubricon, rest in peace. Play Miracle Girl. Summon Cecily of the Fake Court. Summon Druid of the Plains. Play Scales of Anixia. So why would you want to play this instead? Well, it must have a pretty great effect. Except that leads me to part two. Two, you probably don't even want this effect. It's honestly questionable if this effect is even beneficial. Usually spells are pretty situational and get the most benefit when they're played at just the right moment. With Sheldris, you are saying, No, F it. Jamar's down there somewhere. And hoping you don't prize Fury right before you were about to summon a bunch of minions or discover some terrible card off planted evidence when you were really looking for something specific. You can get powerful effects for free like Celestial Alignment, Convocation of Spirits, and uh, Best in Shell is alright I guess. Muck Plumber. Muck Plumber is a 5 mana 5 5 minion that makes all minions cost 2 more. I myself was someone who fell for this card in the pre-release season, like many others along with cards like Forensic Duster. It seems like playing this card in an aggressive deck would put yourself at a big advantage since decks aiming to play larger minions would now be much slower. In reality, aggressive decks don't want to be running 5-5s five and this symmetrical effect isn't really that enticing especially for 5 full mana. What should have tipped me off is comparing this card to the sometimes relevant and wild Nerubar Fleshlord, which is 3 mana less, has better stats for the cost, allows targeted disruption of battle cry strategies while allowing you to play non-battle cry minions at their regular cost, and can get cheated out of the deck with things like Call to Arms. This card doesn't have any of these things going for it and gets destroyed by spell very easily. Cowardly Grunt Cowardly Grunt is a 6 mana 6 2 minion with death rattle, summon a random minion from your deck. I always love these types of effects, whether it's front lines or commencement or even proving grounds, a card that just barely avoided this list. Cheating out massive minions you don't normally get to play is usually a great time. Currently in standard you have cards like Lothar, Remornia, Mr. Smite, Red Herring, Abominable Lieutenant, Invincible, Flesh Behemoth, Neptulon, and Stoneborn General. The issue with this card is that a lot of the support Warrior had for big archetypes rotated out, like the aforementioned commencement. And that leads you to another issue, when you are playing a big deck, things are going to move pretty slowly. When you finally cheat out a big minion, you want to have a massive board impact where you can start swinging the game in your favor. If your recruit or commencement or even your other cowardly grunt pulls this instead, you are not getting any immediate value. While this card could potentially deal a lot of damage to your opponent if it gets left up, this card being a low health death rattle means that your opponent gets to choose when the big minion gets summoned and can wait until they have something like a shadow or death to answer it. Baron's Blacksmith Baron's Blacksmith is a 5 mana 3 5 neutral minion with frenzy, give your other minions plus 2 plus 2. On the one hand, a neutral board buff, on the other hand, Frenzy is a keyword that triggers the first time a minion survives damage. Not as esoteric as attack for 5 or more damage 4 times in a game to gain reputation, but still, Frenzy is one of the stranger keywords to have graced Hearthstone's Tavern. Frenzy had an issue of needing a lot of help from other mechanics to make it good. For instance, Stonemall Anchorman and Blademaster Samuro were both very successful Frenzy cards, but they were heavily carried by the Rush keyword, making the effects more like the first time this card attacks, rather than effects that would come from the minion getting hit into. The best Frenzy card didn't have Rush, but it was Efficient Octobot. A cheap, relatively high health minion, where most decks could not remove it turn 2 without triggering its Frenzy, the effect was so broken that people would run cards like the Og Merchants or Penflinger to trigger it. Baron's Blacksmith has neither complementary effects to make its Frenzy easier, nor does it have such a strong effect that you would dedicate cards in your deck to try to Frenzy it. Sure, Demon Hunter or Paladin, classes that typically lack access to board white buffs for their tokens to get plus 2 plus 2 everywhere is pretty good, but the cost of the card is a bit too restrictive. If this card was just a spell that was 5 mana to give your minions plus 2 plus 2, it would probably be pretty good. The issue is that to activate the effect, you need the 5 mana for this card, plus 1 mana for a card like Elven Archer, plus you need to have drawn both those cards, plus you need to actually have a board plus L, plus ratio, plus you just got Pog Beasted. Direwolf Commander is a 3 mana 2-5 minion with honorable kill, summon a 2-2 wolf with stealth. 
One of those cards that was far better in Arena than Standard, Direwolf Commander provides a decently sized body that can pretty regularly produce an extra 2-2, making it a 3-mana 4-7, in some sense. It's especially better in Arena when the removal you would need for this card is hard to draft, as opposed to in Standard when you can just include the removal in your deck. Honorable Kill is another of Hearthstone's strange keywords in that it triggers whenever the card kills a minion with exact damage. Again, harder to use without rush or being a spell, Honorable Kill is a keyword that can work well in classes like Mage that have a hero power that can decrement the health of enemy minions to set up Honorable Kills. However, it is one of those keywords where the filler cards in Standard end up being standouts in Arena like Frantic Hippogriff or Night Captain. But this is a list of cards people don't play in Standard, so... Flag Runner. Flag Runner is a 3 mana 1 6 minion that gains 1 attack every time a friendly minion dies. At least prior to the infused keyword, we can now get a better estimate for how hard it is to have a bunch of friendly minions die. This card has pretty much been power crept by the entire infused keyword, as all those cards get stronger in the hand, so you don't even need to summon it and keep the card alive. For instance, Priest of the Deceased is a 2 mana 4 5. Merlocula can come down for zero pretty easily, and Merlocula over everyone. And cards like Famished Fool can get to be a 5 mana 3 5 draw 3 incredibly easily for all classes too, instead of just Demon Hunter. Token Demon Hunter has always just been a card away, it's just that this card definitely is not it. There are other cards that fit the description of never being played, but these are the ones I found the most interesting. I love looking at the unpopular cards because it feels like a new set just released when you see all the cards you completely forgot about. And maybe, some of these cards can go on from irrelevancy and become meta staples like Ogremancer. Or maybe they'll just stay at 0% forever. Anyway, thanks for watching. Reminder to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm also on Twitter at Mr. Chundo and on TikTok at Chundo TikTok. Thanks. Oh, also, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. Ethics.